good morning, everybody. As I'm sure you appreciate, our service this morning was pre-recorded before we heard the sad news of the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. But like the rest of the nation, we wanted to mark his death, to pay our respects, and say thank you for his many years of faithful service and devotion to Her Majesty the Queen and the nation. So let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you have given us in and through the life of Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. We give you thanks for his long and full life, for his strength of character, and for his devotion and service to family, nation, and commonwealth. We praise you for his generosity, the many contributions he made to our national life, and the encouragement he gave to so many, especially to the young. Accept our thanks and praise, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, please be close to all those who mourn, and especially at this time to the Queen and all members of the royal family. May they know the hope of your promises and the comfort of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to our service for the second Sunday of Easter. Let us begin. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. And so we say together, we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Our first hymn, a favourite for many, it reminds us that as he has risen, we have that assurance of his abiding presence with us. So enjoy now blessed assurance.
Let us come now to our time of confession. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. So we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer of thanksgiving for the Easter season. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you, ra you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And now we're going to have our reading, uh, and it will be read by Michael Patterson, from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord, take my mind now and think through me. Take my heart and love through me. Take my lips and speak through me your words to teach and touch our hearts that we may glorify you in our lives for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Now on this uh, first Sunday after Easter day, we're going to look at the risen Jesus and then we're going to look at Thomas. But first of all, we just need to consider the situation in which the disciples found themselves. Jesus' disciples were gathered in one room with the door locked and they were stressed and perplexed. They'd witnessed the crucifixion and the appalling suffering of Jesus two days earlier, this man who they had taken was going to be king, who'd been betrayed by one of their own, who had since committed suicide, who had been denied three times by the most extrovert member of the group, and had been deserted by them all when things looked dangerous. So on top of natural grief and shock, they were suffering awful guilt and shame, particularly because Jesus had told them that they would run away, and they had. Now Jesus was dead. There was no way they could say sorry. There was no way they could make up to him, and they were feeling utterly worthless. Also, they were frightened that the chief priests might make an example of them too. Now, as if all that were not enough, the women had gone to the tomb at dawn and found it empty. And Mary Magdalene had rushed back and reported this to Peter and John, who went to see for themselves. They found the grave clothes actually in place but no body. And then just minutes after Peter and John had returned, Mary Magdalene had dashed in with this crazy tale. She'd seen Jesus alive. He'd spoken to her and she to him. And she'd given, he had given her a message for them. I'm returning to my father and to your father, to my God and your God. So now they didn't know what to believe, and they were confused. What else to do but support each other just by staying together, though without Thomas? And so into this situation came the risen, living Jesus. Quite suddenly, very much alive, he didn't bother to knock or use the door, Somehow he was just standing there among them. And he said, peace be with you. Now let's just pause for a moment at this point and consider the facts facing the disciples because as you'll see in a moment, that was an extraordinary thing for Jesus to say. First of all, Mary Magdalene was right. She really had seen the living Jesus that morning and he really had spoken to her. And then secondly, despite their utter failure, their denial, their desertion, and despite everything he had suffered, the risen, living Lord Jesus had come to them. Not to berate them, not to say, I warned you, but you still got it all wrong, but to say instead, Peace be with you. No wonder the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And then, despite their weakness and all their failures, Jesus commissioned them to continue his work. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. 
So their failures were forgiven. Their shame and their guilt were dismissed. Joy replaced their grief. Assurance replaced their fear. Their worthlessness was replaced by the knowledge that Jesus both valued and loved them. Did they deserve all this? Never. And yet that is what Jesus does for all who come to him in humility. And all seems to have been summed up in the word peace. The Hebrew for peace is shalom. And that Hebrew word means so much more than our English word peace. It concerns your welfare, your well-being in body, mind, and spirit. It concerns your wholeness as a person, your completeness, if you like. And it concerns harmony within yourself, harmony with others, and harmony between you and God. And it's a beautiful blessing, and it comes only as God's gift. Now this shalom peace is the peace of which Jesus spoke when he said to his disciples, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Paul called this peace the peace of God which passes all understanding. The world simply cannot provide that peace. It came into the world in Jesus Christ, who is our Prince of Peace. And so we come to Thomas. I think history has been unjustly hard on Thomas because he wouldn't believe his colleagues. He was actually no more a doubter than they because they wouldn't believe Mary Magdalene. And more than anything, he must have wanted what they said to be true. But it was essential that no dreadful mistake had been made. He didn't want to be taken in. And I must say that in Thomas's place, <clears throat> I would have felt very hurt that Jesus had revealed himself when I was not there. Why leave me out? Am I so hopelessly worse than the others? Am I not to be included with them anymore? Have I been written off? Now, a week later, the disciples were together again, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came to them in the same way as he had before, and he knew all about Thomas. And he told him, put your finger here, See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. To which Thomas voiced a faith that had never been articulated before. My Lord and my God. He might almost have gone on to say, you've always been my Lord, but now you're my God too. Jesus answered him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And that, of course, includes you and me. Jesus had used Thomas's absence on the previous occasion to a glorious purpose. Here was reassurance that Thomas was no worse than the others. He had not been written off, and Thomas had uttered the high point of faith, my Lord and my God. And therein lies a lesson for us all. As Jesus knew that Thomas knew Thomas personally and intimately, so Jesus knows every one of us personally and intimately. Whatever our doubts, Whatever our troubles, our anxieties, our fears, our failures, our guilt, our shame, our feelings of worthlessness, and despite all our noise and our complaining, if we come humbly to him, 
confess our sins, tell him what is troubling us. Jesus will forgive. He will cleanse us and set us free and encourage us in our faith in him because he is our Lord and our God and he is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we have our next hymn, Breathe On Me, Breath of God. And so now we are going to declare our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May Almighty God strengthen this faith in us. Let us pray. The Collect for the Second Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we have read, that the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews. Heavenly Father, we pray that we who are not together will be able to come together soon as lockdown restrictions are eased and doors are unlocked. Overcome the fear and anxiety that has been such a part of life for so many. May all come to know your perfect love that drives out all fear. Help us to continue to put our trust in you. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Heavenly Father, 
There are so many parts of the world where there is no peace. We pray your peace for the tensions and conflict between nations over vaccines, over resources, race and religion. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Heavenly Father, we pray for peace within our own nation and communities where there is tension and despair with mental illness, unemployment, poverty, racism, sexual abuse, political and cultural differences. Help us, Father, to be the peacemakers that bring your peace. Send us into the communities where you have placed us to live and work for your glory. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we know we cannot be sent without the power of your Holy Spirit. Fill your church, your people, afresh with your Holy Spirit to work for your kingdom. We pray especially for those who have responsibilities for us and authority over us, that they may too receive the Holy Spirit for wisdom and discernment. Open their hearts to the risen Lord Jesus and the power of your Spirit. The risen Jesus says to the disciples, if you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. Heavenly Father, we know the power of your forgiveness in Jesus. We pray for that power in us to forgive those that have hurt us. In a society so quick to accuse and blame, we pray for that spirit of forgiveness. Heavenly Father, as we emerge into spring and out of lockdown, may the knowledge of the presence of, the risen, of your risen Son, Jesus, be ever with us. May the good news of Easter be a growing reality so that, like Thomas, we can exclaim, My Lord and my God. Amen. Bringing our prayers all together, we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn reminds us of the power of the name of whom we worship. It is Jesus, the name high over all.
and we come to our closing prayer. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. And we say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. So that really does bring our service to a close. We look forward to seeing you next week. There won't actually be a a service in church next week but there will be one online and we look forward to seeing you then thank you goodbye If you would like to support the ministry of any of the churches within the Necton Benefice, then please see the notes under this service on the YouTube channel for All Saints Necton. Or you can now give to each of the churches by using the QR codes which follow. Just pause the video at the code of your choice, scan it using the appropriate app on your phone, and you'll be taken directly to the diocesan donation page for that particular church. God bless and thank you for your support.